Hi everyone, welcome to our second video on forces, accelerating objects. Our first video was balancing forces, that dealt with objects that weren't accelerating, uh, therefore the sum of forces on them was zero, and simply had a number of forces acting on them that balanced out perfectly. In this case, the forces won't balance out perfectly. We're going to be looking at objects that have a net force that is not zero, and therefore an acceleration that is not zero in some direction. Uh, we're going to use a bike for this example. Let's give a bit of information about it. We'll say the bike has mass 30 kilograms. That won't change. We'll say it has initial velocity zero, final velocity eight, so really what we're looking at is a bike in one instance here which is stationary, and then another instance here which is zooming along, <coughs> but use your imagination for that part. Uh, and we'll say, as of now, it does not have any frictional forces on it. So the only forces acting on this bike are the weight force, the normal force, I'll draw it from the center of the object, and the driving force there at least for the first question which we're doing. Uh, the key bits of information for question one is the total time it takes to go from zero meters a second to eight meters per second is 16 seconds. So T is equal to 16 seconds. And the question will ask, what is the driving force on this bicycle? FD is equal to. Okay. Let's figure out the acceleration of this bicycle using our motion formula V equals U plus AT. We have V here. We have U and we have T. Therefore, we should be able to figure out acceleration. Uh, if we get acceleration by itself, we have to go V take U on T is equal to A, or 8 take away 0 on 16 is equal to 8 over 16, which is equal to a half, which is A. So the acceleration of this bicycle is a half meters per second squared. The bike is accelerating in that direction there. We'll get something out of, out of the way very quickly. If the bicycle is neither accelerating in the upward direction nor the downward direction, it means the normal force must absolutely balance with the weight force here. So the weight force is equal to mg, which is 30 times 10, or 300 newtons. And the normal force, therefore, must also be equal to 300 newtons. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing interesting happening in the vertical direction. It's all about this horizontal acceleration caused by that driving force. If we know that the acceleration of the bicycle is equal to a half meters per second squared, and we know the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration, <coughs> then the net force of this bicycle is equal to MA, or 30, times a half, 15 newtons. Since there is only one force, this is in the horizontal direction by the way, since there's only one force which is causing that acceleration, the net force is equal to the driving force there. So the driving force is equal to 15 newtons. Question two. We're going to introduce a resistance force. So keep that information in your mind. Now we have a resistance force there. And we'll say that resistance force has a magnitude of 30 newtons. But the acceleration of the object has not changed. It is simply now the driving force that has changed. The reason the acceleration hasn't changed is because we still have the same time the same uh, final velocity, 
and the same initial velocity. So acceleration is still a half meters per second squared. Therefore, the net force is also the same. 30 times a half or 15. But now the net force is made up of the driving force. The net force we're taking positive in that direction. It's made up of the driving force, FD, FD, take away, since it's acting in the opposite direction, the 30 Newton resistance force. So another way of writing that is sum of forces, which is equal to 15, which is equal to FD, take 30, or adding 30 to both sides, the driving force is now 45 newtons. So if we introduce a resistive force here and we want to maintain the same acceleration we really have to increase the driving force to overcome this force back here. Now the third question I'm going to ask, assume we have that same uh, that same um, resistive force but the driving force is now a mystery. Furthermore, the time taken to accelerate is a mystery, but we know that from being stationary to reaching 8 metres per second, the bike moved a total of 20 metres, so S is now 20 metres. Let's figure out the driving force required by the bike to achieve the acceleration from 0 to 8 metres per second in 20 metres. So using the motion formula, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. To find fd we need to know the sum of forces. To know the sum of forces we need to know acceleration. To find acceleration we need to have v, u and s, which we do. Let's get acceleration by itself. v squared take away u squared all over 2s is equal to a. Or 8 squared take away 0 squared all over 220 is equal to A or 64 on 40 is equal to A which is equal to 1.6 so the bike is accelerating at 1.6 meters per second squared now we can figure out the sum of forces the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceler acceleration which is 30 all, of course all this ignoring the fact that someone would be on the bike but right now let's just assume this is a bike that's accelerating by itself so 30 times 1.6 which is equal to 48 newtons so that is the net force uh, on this bicycle and we know from our force diagram talking in the horizontal direction the net force is equal to the driving force take away the resistive force so 48 is equal to driving force take away 30 or the driving force is equal to 78 newtons I hope this question enabled you to understand um, you know like the force diagrams you've got to draw how to incorporate the motion equations into this work and how to find what the net force is made up of. So in this case it was the driving force take away the resistive force here. I was sorry, I was caught up there. One final thing I'd like, I'd like to work out here is how long it took for that bike to accelerate through those 20 meters uh, from 0 meters a second to 8 meters per second. And I realize we can actually use that equation there. V equals U plus AT. V take U on A equals T. A to take away 0 over the acceleration we found was 1.6 equals T, which is equal to 8 divided by 1.6, 5 seconds. So the bike took 5 seconds to accelerate in this case over here. That seems like a pretty good place to end that lesson. Next, we'll be looking at objects on slopes.